everyone. Today I wanted to do, it's number one, it's raining and the rain and the woods and everything around me screams spring. So I decided to do a series of videos where I'm going to share with you the basics of growing a successful garden. Now this is going to be my third year gardening, but before I started a garden, I read through so many books. I'm telling you, I don't even know the number of books that I read about organic gardening. And even though I am not that kind of person that will go and buy the things that you see in most videos like buying organic soil or buying compost or buying this, I never bought any of those things. Yet, I was able to get a good harvest since I started gardening. So in today's video, it's going to be the first video of the series on how to grow a successful garden and I'm talking about this will apply to your vegetable garden or your food garden or it could be applied to your flower garden. A lot of people are trying to grow their own food and for various reasons that I'm not going to get into but I think it's a popular theme there so in case that you don't want to buy the compost or in case that you don't have the money to buy all those additives and all those things that you need to grow according to some videos a successful organic garden or a garden then hopefully this videos and series of videos will help you get there today we're gonna talk about the number one thing you should do before you even start putting some seeds on the ground or even starting them in a greenhouse or inside the house for a spring garden or a summer garden and that is taking care of your soil. You'll see one of my favorite things to do in the garden is touch the soil, the earth, and see the texture and see how wet it is and what it needs. And in the beginning that sounded like a, a chemistry lesson. I just didn't know what that meant. So hopefully in this video I have a few things written down to kind of make a point of the important things on how you can touch your soil and say this is what it needs or this is what it has the most and you can do your own test I'm going to show you how to do your own test to see if you have clayish soil if you have sandy soil or if you have mostly silt in your soil and we're going to talk about how to fix that problem so one so of the first things in an organic garden or in a natural garden or in a free garden without having to buy a lot of fertilizers or things to help your plants grow is to take care of your soil in case you didn't know soil is a, a very it's very much alive it's a breathing organism and like many organisms it needs some nurture now, the earth has an amazing way to create its own earth, its own soil, but it takes 500 years. So, if we already have the soil in our backyard or in our front um, or in the front of our house, how can we tell what it needs to be nurtured? I was reading this book and it was telling you about some important gardening tools. And in the end, there was this gardener, I can't remember the name, but I'll try to put it on the screen if I remember while I edit this. But he said that the, the number one tool of a gardener is observation. And today, I absolutely agree. Now, how is soil made? I was telling you that the earth can produce its own soil or its own earth. But why does it take 500 years to create an inch of soil. Well, let me tell you a little bit about that because it kind of ties down to what we're doing to the earth to grow our first garden. Now, soil is born from the physical weathering of rocks and the biological action of plants and microbes. So a lot needs to happen in nature for that process to happen. 
like some of them glacial drifts, volcanic, volcanic eruptions, wind and water movements, freezing and thawing, and all those things need to happen in order to create that soil. Even earthquake really break down the earth's crust until plants are able to gain a foothold and extract some nutrients from the fine rocks particles. Deep down at bedrock, subsoil is constantly being made, slowly, because as I mentioned before, it does take 500 years to actually create an inch of soil. But we don't have 500 years to really make that happen, do we? Uh, I mean, our time here is limited and we are very anxious to grow our first garden. So the only way that you can create soil that is optimum or the best for your plants is by using what we have. And what are those things? Well, the actual soil that we all have in our yards and then on top of that organic matter because if you remember we do need microbes in order to break down that organic material to be absorbed all the nutrients by the soil that we have and that it needs to be nurtured and fed now there's unlimited methods of feeding your soil with organic matter and whatever you choose to do it's really your personal option i'm going to share some of those options things that you can do to feed your soil with organic matter but we all have different methods and i'm going to share mine in this video but you can also pick the other ones that i'm going to mention here too and do whatever is best for your soil or your garden Now, the first thing that you can do is mulch. Mulch is organic matter. You know, the peels that you get from your vegetables and your fruit, um, especially if they are some kind of citrus, they have amazing things that will support that micro life or that microscopic life in your earth or soil. You can also add straw, whatever you can use as mulch. And mulch, what it means, it's something that is covering the soil. Well, that's my definition, of course, and if you look in the dictionary, it's gonna say something different. But I'm gonna show you right here in the woods where I am right now, soil is covered in leaves. And because of that, it's creating some amazing soil that really nature is taking care of it. So kind of the proof that mulch works is if you go through a forest, that it's really not being touched or messed with by humans so you can see like here there is moss there are leaves and twigs and a bunch of raw materials that are falling from the trees they are sitting on top of the soil and little by little are breaking down so that's natural mulch now you can also add manure that's my favorite method of mulching what i do is i clean the goat house or i clean the rabbit house or i clean the duck house and the mix between pine shavings or straw or even hay that is wasted i you know it's kind of the perfect mix between manure and that mulch so when it's combined the manure is uh, it, it's the nitrogen or it's the fuel that the straw or pine shavings or even hay need to start breaking down and turning into hummus which is going to go and be drained into the soil and that's going to be the food that you need for your soil but manure is really not something that you 100% need. It really helps to speed up the process and it will make things faster. But there's also some other natural fertilizers that you can do or you can make into a tea. Like um, you can buy online this uh, warm casting tea that you can dilute in water and help that heat up or mulch and that way make it into hummus a lot faster but definitely manure is not a must. There's other people that the only thing that they add as mulch into their garden, this is preparing the garden to start putting their seeds down. So they will add only manure and straw, which is what they clean out of their animals' houses. That's another method. You don't really need to use your kitchen scraps. But in my experience, that really helps a lot. Mm -hmm. 
other people just use organic fertilizers. Uh, they just dump a lot of minerals, rocks, and even fertilizers. And they create that environment in more of a um, mm, store-bought kind of way. Uh, other people just use compost, finished compost, the one that you come up with when you compost. And in the end, you can kind of use something to strain it and get just the most amazing hummus and it's all ready and it's ready to use, put on top of your plants and feed your soil. So there's not a better way of doing this, but there are all different ways that you can feed your soil, either by mulching with whatever you have, mulching with manure and the compost that you would put in a compost pile. You can do it by just buying these things from the store. Or really just start now composting, create a lot of compost and be ready for next year. Whatever it is that you decide, some of the things you can buy, of course, at the store, like the fertilizers, the rocks, the minerals, and also the compost. But for me, it's better to create it for myself because those are things that are gonna go to the garbage anyways. I mean, nobody wants to keep animal manure um, as a price or something, and it's eventually gonna break down. So if I can put it in my garden directly and let nature take care of it as if it was mulch in the woods, then that's definitely the best option for me. But you can do whatever you think will work better for your garden.